to uh, what are, oh no never mind what are you going to do huh you're not going to do it anymore good morning everybody morning morning i'm gonna pan to jana uh-uh no more she's covering her face okay how was everybody's weekend good fun good fun yeah well uh the Kleachko kids clatch company had a concert yesterday at the state theater so everybody still um, has, uh, everybody has a hangover <laughs> it was a uh, in my humble parental opinion it was a very good performance <laughs> and, yeah, of course the, this time it included kobe as the uh guest as the guest performer there is where's kobe thank you hey, kobe. thank you <laughs> easy <laughs> smile kobe <laughs> you're on camera uh, smile okay today today we are how many weeks into lent one uh, yeah well not actually not even one week <laughs> so this is uh, basically the first week after uh, Ash Wednesday, okay? Hi, Tito Irwin. Irwin is there watching us. Hi, Good morning. Okay. Hi. So today, today we're going to be hearing, at Mass, we're going to be hearing uh, from St. Mark. The Gospel for today is from St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. It's a long Gospel, okay? Pretty long Gospel. And uh, I'm not going to read everything here because it's... Uh, it's long, uh, but I'll, let, I'll tell you, I'll give you a summary. This is the story of that demoniac, that person who was possessed, who, who was living in the, uh, in, in the graveyard, the cemeteries, and then he runs out there and Jesus and meets Jesus and says, oh, Jesus, what have uh, you to do with me? And uh, Jesus already knew, of course, he was possessed. And uh, he was telling the, the devil, inside of him to get out but uh, wouldn't quite easily get out so Jesus asked him what is your name asked the devil what is your name and then the devil replied legion is my name there are many of us there's not only one many legion okay so the word legion uh, means many and so the devil revealed that there were many of them inside that man and well the, the rest of the story goes that Jesus drove out commanded legion to get out of that man and but then the devil said oh no just don't let us uh, uh, loose uh, put us on the swine right there on the herd of swine <laughs> and Jesus said okay Go ahead, be my guest, get into the swine. And then, of course, the swine, herd of swine, uh, went berserk yeah, and started running down the hill into the, uh, uh, into the ocean or river, or I don't know what body of water that was there, the lake. Anyway, uh, so what lessons can we gain from this? What lessons can we learn from this particular gospel? I think one very... Uh, clear message one very clear message in this gospel uh, for today is this that no matter how many sins we have no matter how many defects we have no matter how many shortcomings we have no matter how much of a wreck we think we are okay we may have legions of things that bedevil us. We may have a legion of defects, a legion of shortcomings, a legion of, uh, of uh, missteps, mistakes in our lives. All of that does not matter to Jesus. Nothing matters to Jesus. Well, not that it doesn't matter, right? But I mean, what I mean by that is that all of those things are small time as far as Jesus is concerned. Jesus is more powerful than all the ailments, all the devils, no matter how many they are, and all the defects that eat us up. 
Nothing is impossible with God. Remember the apostles when they asked Jesus when he was talking to them about the rich man, the rich young man, and then they all scratched their heads and said, so who can be saved now? Jesus told them, well, with man, it is impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. So the same thing is true with our lives. No matter how bad we think we are, no matter how much, how many defects we might have, no matter how many challenges we have in our lives, all of those are nothing for Jesus. They, as far as the power of our Lord is concerned to convert us and to make us better, right? God is more powerful. God is more powerful. And He can create miracles for our lives. Okay? He can create miracles. He can convert us. He can give us the grace to repent from our sins. He can give us the strength to be whole again and to get back on our feet. Okay? So, we should not get discouraged no matter how many defects we have, no matter how many uh, troubles we have, no matter how many sins we have. And, and evil tendencies that bedevil us, we should not get discouraged. What should we do instead? Number one, number one lesson here, be humble. Be humble. For our Lord to work on our souls and get the devils out of us, we need to be humble like this, uh, this demoniac, right? He asked Jesus, what have you to do with me? See, it's not like a question of saying, hey, you know, why, what are you, why bother with me? What are you doing? You know, uh, it, it was more like an acceptance of his own situation. See, look, I'm a wreck here. You think I'm, I'm, I'm of any use to anybody? See, that's why I just live here among the tombs. Because I'm useless to anybody. Well, Jesus has a different opinion. And he wanted to cure him. And Jesus can do the same thing for us. See? Jesus will do the same thing for us. No matter how much of a wreck we think we are. Okay? Our Lord is going to look compassionately on our souls. If, number one, we are humble. We have to be humble. We have to realize our defects. We have to recognize our own uh, mistakes. We have to recognize our own nothingness before God. We have to be humble. We cannot be cocky, right? We cannot be going around town cocky and say, oh, I'm better than everybody else. You know? We cannot be like the Pharisee praying in the temple saying, Hey, God, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I'm not like that uh, uh, publican over there who... Uh, who, um, you know, I fast twice a week, I pray in the temple, I uh, give tithes, and give. I'm a good guy, right? I'm a good guy. You know what? Many times, we, we act like that. Unconsciously, we act like that before God. Unconsciously, we act like that before the people who are supposed to have authority over us, like our parents. Right? When we disobey, when we rebel, when we contradict what our parents say of us, we think we're smarter than them. We think we know better than them. We think we know that they don't know what they're talking about. There. That's cockiness. Right? That's lack of humility. And our Lord, you, you are barring our Lord from working on us, on you. You see, instead of being humble and welcoming the grace that God is willing to give you, you put obstacles, you put up a wall because you are not humble, because you're so proud. Eh? You don't want to admit that you're wrong. You don't want to admit your defects. You don't want to open your eyes and see who you really are. Right? Eh? That is pride. That is right. That's the first thing we need to get rid of if our Lord were to work on our souls. Okay? Just like this demoniac, right? He opened himself to, to Jesus and, and said, well, okay, what are you going to do then? <laughs> Same thing is true with us. We have to be humble. Number two, we have to be sincere. We have to show the sincerity that we really want to change, that we really want to reform our lives. Eh? But if we keep falling back in doing the same things, 
if we keep falling back and doing the same sins, committing the same mistakes, then we are not sincere. Even the apologies we make are a farce. Right? We're not sincere. So we have to make our confessions count. When we go to confession and we really say, I'm sorry for my sins, they better be true contrition, true sin sincere contrition. Otherwise, you're not also obtaining forgiveness from that confession. There has to be purpose of amendment that you really want to correct yourself. You really want to do your best to correct your mistakes. Otherwise, you're making a fool of yourself, right? You think, you know, it's not God who's going to suffer from your lack of humility, your lack of sincerity, your lack of uh, purpose of amendment. It's not God who will suffer. It's you. So you're making a fool of yourself, right? And number three, don't get discouraged. Don't ever get discouraged. The devil wants you to be discouraged. Okay? The devil wants you to be discouraged. But never fall into that other trap of discouragement. Okay? Because God's grace is stronger than your biggest weakness. Just remember that. God's grace is stronger than your biggest weakness. And therefore, with humility, with sincerity, okay, you can overcome. With God's grace, you can overcome your defects. You can overcome your struggles. You can overcome everything in this life with God's grace. Okay. Hello, Ava. Ava is also listening. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good Monday. Have a good day and have a good rest of your week, everybody. Bye.